mastering. Um, Caleb, you're actually the only person who has joined me so far today. So if you have any questions at any point, feel free to put those in the chat box. Um, it might be worth me finding out from you first uh, what subjects you teach, because that'll be really helpful um, in terms of the, the things that I focus on, and also to check that mastering is a platform that would fit with what you're teaching currently. <laughs> so, Okay, if you can pop in the chat box at some point, uh, what subject you teach, that would be really helpful. Thank you. So, um, just to say what we're going to go through today, um, I'm going to cover off the um, kind of challenges you might be facing in teaching and some of the solutions that are provided by using our online um, assessment and tutorial system, Mastering. And if you have any questions, like I said, feel free to pop those in the chat back box. Um, but we'll pick up any key questions you have after I've gone through the presentation. So what is mastering? So um, mastering is a online um, program which is designed to help you reach each of your higher education students um, with trusted content, a way to personalize their learning experience, and for you as an instructor, a powerful way of managing your course. Each mastering course, um, which is across the STEM subjects, so science, um, engineering, and um, one computer science course, um, each of the mastering systems for those different subjects is designed with tools that best support a student's learning in that subject. So if it was a, a kind of visual um, subject like anatomy and physiology, we've got animations. Um, if it's a physics or engineering course, then there are tools in there to build kind of problem solving using vector drawing and things like that. So the tools are very bespoke to the subject within each mastering course. And mastering is designed to use before class, so you can set pre-lecture assignments. You can also use it during class through a feature called Learning Catalytics. And then after class, the ideal way to use it is to be able to set formative or potentially summative assessment. Um, and mastering has got a wealth of resources built into it to allow you to do that easily and um, to be able to set homework across your course throughout the course and have it automatically marked. Um, so to summarize for instructors, it's a, essentially a course management system, but as you'll see with plenty of content built in. So it's very different to a VLE. And for students, um, if you sort of use it and integrate it into your course, it's providing them with a homework tutorial and assessment system, which then gives them feedback um, at sort of throughout the course and at times that are relevant to them. So it's really easy in mastering um, to preview content, assign that content to your students, and then it's automatically graded. So you don't have to worry about paper marking or having um, feedback sessions or getting that feedback back to individual students. And for students, it's a really effective and efficient way of learning. Um, so we have plenty of um, case studies and uh, evidence of um, the effectiveness of mastering for helping students master key concepts and develop skills. And for students, it's the, one of the reasons it's effective and efficient is that it does allow them to interact and learn the course content that you are setting them anytime, uh, anywhere and on any device that they have with them. So it's really making it really accessible, the learning on your course. So what are some of those uh, teaching challenges that you might be facing and how does mastering support you with um, overcoming those? So this is based on like, our understanding of higher education in the region um, and sort of through working with instructors and lecturers like yourselves, kind of understanding what kind of are the key challenges um, in these subjects. 
So the first one is um, large cohorts. So that might be, um, you know, a particularly sizable cohort. So, you know, 500 upwards, or it might just be that you've got 200 students, but there is only you delivering that course. That still is a, a large cohort for you to deal with as a single instructor. Um, and so what mastering will allow you to do is, is do the things that really you would love to be able to do, but are impossible to do with 200 plus students. And that is assigning regular homework and quizzes. And that is from a bank of thousands of tried and tested problems of lots of different kinds of problems as well. Having those assignments automatically graded, meaning that your students receive instant feedback. And actually, as they work through those assignments, they're getting effectively personalized coaching on the wrong answers they make and the kind of progress they are making towards um, understanding key concepts or what are they not understanding in terms of key concepts? What do they need more practice and support on? Um, because of way, the way mastering is built, it's built around a subject, as I've said, um, it integrates lots of different tools and um, learning kind of multimedia resources. And those all come together when you assign um, homework for students into um, a set of learning tools that they can use, as I've said, anywhere, anytime and on any device. But they're also being motivated. So the, the content is engaging. There are tutorial activities which help students get to the right answer and which ultimately helps them develop confidence in the subject that they're learning. We'll come on to look at how learning catalytics can be used um, uh, for an instructor's benefit, but actually just using learning catalytics, which is our classroom response system that is embedded in mastering, you can really engage students in your lectures. So students are more likely to attend lectures, take part, um, concentrate, um, and take an active part in their learning in your lectures when you use a classroom response system such as learning catalytics. And it's providing students with activities and tools that um, either are through assigned by you or through their sort of self-study area that are helping them to prepare for that final exam rather than all at the end. They're actually doing that throughout the course. It's a kind of way to motivate them to um, engage with studying regularly so that they are prepared. And then the other thing that you might be um, kind of really want to be able to do, but are struggling to do is see the kind of bigger picture. Um, there's a lot of talk around data, big data, um, and you, the use of learner analytics. Mastering, when you use it again to sort of assign regular homework um, assignments, you will be able to see how your students are progressing in the course. So you'll have one click analysis. So we'll come on to um, see this, but showing you the student activity within mastering, you'll be able to see quite quickly the struggling students and particularly any students who are at risk of dropping out of your course completely. Um, using learning catalytics in class obviously helps you engage students, but it actually more crucially means you can test your class understanding of a concept in the moment you're teaching it. So if you find out that they didn't get something, you could uh, go over that point again, explain it in a slightly different way, use a different example, and then send out another question um, for them to respond to via learning catalytics and see, hopefully, <laughs> progress towards, oh, okay, I think they've got it now um, with that additional explanation. Um, and if you use um, the two things in combination and you might use them across cohorts in the same year or across years, you might be able to begin to see patterns um, appearing. So maybe uh, with different instructors teaching on different cohorts or um, different kind of levels of cohorts that you might have. Um, or what you might see is that students' knowledge upon entering university is changing over time. So there might be specific topics where they're really confident in your course now but over a couple of years period, you see that actually they're less confident on that particular topic within your course. So you could obviously do something to kind of address that and um, change the, the way that you teach that topic, perhaps. 
So let's actually have a look at mastering. So I'm going to be showing mastering physics. I'm showing that purely because um, it's sort of a good representation of mastering generally. So that's the overall structure of the platform, a lot of the key features. Um, and we're going to really focus in on um, two key features of mastering, which are the assignments and those problems that you can assign and have automatically graded for you and the learning catalytics feature. And then we'll look at how that all feeds into a grade book. So hopefully, uh, my, my system tells me that you are seeing my screen. So hopefully uh, you are. OK. So this is what a mastering homepage looks like. And you've got your um, sort of see, guide down the side. But in this um, main area of the page, when you first start using mastering, you'll have this box here. And it's just kind of a quick start guide, um, some kind of shortcuts that will get you going and mastering really quickly. Um, you'll also see any assignments you have set, so across um, the length of your course. So I had some homework due uh, this week, today, <laughs> this morning. Um, and then after a lecture, I'm going to have more homework due for students um, to work on. So let's go through the really um, most important part, I guess, of mastering is just showing you how easy it is to create an assignment. You simply click create an assignment, give it a title. And uh, choose your content. So I'm going to go to chapter five. So the content within mastering um, is sort of listed down here. Some key things to note are that you can, you can see there are 165 items for just this single chapter. You, when you get sort of more familiar with the system, you have the option to tailor and filter kind of the, what you're seeing down here. So you might filter by any number of um, these kind of uh, different features of questions. But if we just start by looking at um, the questions that are available, I've got, um, then you get, as an instructor, you get to see the um, name of the question, a short explanation, but you can click on it to see further details. You see the item type. This is a tutorial question, which means it's a structured, scaffolded, um, problem for students to work through. It's likely to have multi parts and students will take a step by step approach um, through the problem. You also see in this column the time spent. Now, this is the average time that a student would spend working on this problem in mastering. So that's based on live data from uh, tens of thousands perhaps hundreds of thousands um, of students who have used and are using mastering and have attempted this question over time. And this is the current average time that it takes a student um, in a higher education institution from anywhere around the world um, to complete this problem. Mastering also generates a difficulty rating and it does this based on how many students get the problem correct first time or how many have to, um, sort of how many attempts they have at getting the correct answer, and also how many hints they had to request to help them get to the right answer. So as you, um, as I scroll down, you'll see those kind of, the type of question is there, the time, the difficulty, there's lots of tutorial questions. Um, then we have some end of chapter questions. So what I'm going to do for my assignment is add a couple of tutorial problems. I'm going to add a 
harder one. Um, and then I want students to do a few end of chapter problems. And the end of chapter problems are more kind of, um, once they have learned a key concept, it's testing their understanding, test if they, if they can apply the theory to other problem situations. So grab all those. Save and continue. learn how to solve and then um, four kind of tests of that understanding. I could change the credit that the assignment is worth, the question is worth if I wanted to make everything um, out of 10 credits or if I wanted to assign a more difficult problem with higher credits. Um, I can require previous so I want to make sure that the students do the tutorial questions in order and then they can att attempt the end chapter problems. You have an option to randomize variables. So this is really good if you have um, students who actually you want them to work together on this homework, but you don't want them to all have exactly the same homework questions so that they could just use each other's answers. You want them to work together to understand how to approach the problem and help each other, but you want them to be working on individual problems and so that will mean that uh, this variable randomized variables means students get different um, numeric variables within the problem they're set here and so they shouldn't be able to directly copy any of their peers answers so I save that um, there is an option within mastering courses to create learning outcomes um, and then you can use this um, section to track progress towards learning outcomes. So if one of these questions is particularly um, supporting the achievement of X learning outcome, you could assign it to that. And when you see students um, results in that problem, you'll know they're tracking towards um, achieving that learning outcome. But I'm not using learning outcomes, so I'm just gonna click continue. And then I set my uh, problem my course course dates, uh, so assignment dates. So it's going to be available from 29th of May, <coughs> due on the 28th before the next lecture. Um, and you can see uh, just below that um, setting a simple word, cho choice of date and time. You can add something called an adaptive follow up. So I mentioned earlier the word personalized um, learning, and this is one of the key personalized learning features within mastering. Um, note, um, I'm showing this, it's in mastering physics, it's not in every single mastering subject, um, but it is worth showing because if it's in a subject um, that you teach, it's a very useful tool. So what the adaptive follow-up will do is allow you to provide students to be given a set of questions that are chosen especially for each student to help them based on their performance in the main homework assignment. <coughs> so once the students complete the homework, if they got a certain, um, below a certain threshold, which you set down here, um, they will be given a number of question sets to attempt. And it's based on what the system up my homework for week five it's ready to go and when it's due to be made available to students they'll see it in their uh, mastering calendar so the next thing to show is Just to briefly show you the um, what I explained about tutorial problems being 
quite large problems which get broken down into smaller parts for students. So as I said, this is physics. So um, I don't know what you teach at the moment, but it may not be relevant in terms of the actual content, but it gives you an idea of the type of problems that students will be attempting in mastering. So students are being asked to um, work, learn about adding scalar multiples of vectors graphically. I confess to not knowing anything about this, but within this uh, tool, as a student, I can um, add my vector. So pretty sure this one's wrong, but I will add my vector and submit my answer. Um, Unfortunately, my pro my program doesn't always like the webinar software that I use. Um, but when a student submits this question, um, they would see feedback here. And if they got it right, they would be told they got it right and an explanation of how how they have got to that point. So to reinforce the thing that they have understood. And if they got it incorrect, the system would work out based on the wrong answer that they put. If it's obvious that they have done some, made a common mistake, it will guide the student and kind of say, this is what you did, but actually you need to think about doing this. Um, so it's really useful feedback for students. It's not just you are right, you are wrong. Um, if they are wrong, they are given a way of kind of uh, getting to the right answer. The other thing um, that students can do is view available hints. I'm going to re re relaunch this question. Apologies. Okay. Fingers crossed, my system now works. Okay, so if I try that vector again, show you the feedback. So when you get that incorrect feedback, um, it gives the students uh, some re useful um, hint on what they should be doing. So the answer needs to be a combination. Um, sorry, the answer must also be horizontal. So they've got a real clear next step. If they're really not sure, they can view the available hints, which um, are in essence breaking down the problem into smaller parts. So very much how you might do that if they came to see you in your office or if you were doing a seminar or a tutorial. And um, so it suggests to the student that it may be helpful to draw another vector first. If they still don't know how to do that, they can open the next hint. which then actually helps them draw that first vector, which is going to help them get to the final answer. So that was just a really quick indication to show you that tutorial problems are very scaffolded, they're multi-part problems, and they will often feature um, quite complex um, problems and ways of working, but that are really crucial to a key a key topic or key approach within the subject of that mastering course. So within physics and engineering, um, using vectors and being able to um, manipulate them and draw them and understand how to add them up is crucial for the rest of the subject. Um, so these tutorial problems really set students up for success. So now I want to show you learning catalytics. And so learning catalytics, as I've mentioned, is embedded within mastering and it's our um, classroom response system. 
Um, so it's embedded within mastering. Um, so students can use Learning Catalytics simply by uh, accessing it through the mastering course. They can use Learning Catalytics on any mobile device. And um, Learning Catalytics is designed essentially for the STEM discipline areas. So it was created by a physics professor at Harvard. Um, and he designed it with uh, physics students in mind, essentially. So science students who are not simply doing multiple choice questions or short answer responses. Um, or kind of true, false, or yes, no, they are often required to draw graph graphs to respond to questions in coursework, in exams. Um, so he really wanted learning catalytics to make that the experience that students have when they are using a classroom response system. So it's a bit beyond um, things where you might have heard of like electronic voting systems, which are simply a sort of A, B, C, D um, response from students. So in the question that you should be seeing on your screen, let me just check that you are. <laughs> yes. Um, so, ah, okay. Let's go use, sorry, Kate, I've just seen your message. Attempting to load the presentation. Hmm. So at the moment, you should be seeing a screen that says learning catalytics. It's blue at the top. Hmm. I'll try and reset. Um, can you see learning catalytics now? No. Ah. Apologies for this. Uh, I just tried to change a setting. I don't know if it helped or not. Sorry, um, I changed a setting. Ah, that's not good, is it? Screen sharing preview. Hmm. Any, is it better now? Oh, very strange. Um, hmm. Preview. Sorry, I'm, I'm failing to work out, I'm afraid, why you're not seeing my screen. So from my end, it looks like it's, it is sharing. There's no kind of other option to change the settings for this sharing of desktop. And it should, it's telling me, it's showing me what you are seeing and that you should be seeing learning catalytics. Um, Hmm. 
So I don't know whether it wasn't, it was just screen sharing that wasn't working, but can you now see the presentation again? It says, let's have a look. Ah, okay. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so sorry about that does that mean Caleb sorry that you didn't see any of me kind of walking through mastering um in terms of what it looked like Ah, I'm really sorry because I couldn't, um, that, that, yeah, it wasn't obvious to me at all on my end. Um, <laughs> and I don't, um, I don't want to take more of your time because this webinar was only meant to be half an hour. Um, but if you, if you don't mind, uh, because you can see the presentation slides, I can show you, um, the grade book. So, the, I mean, hopefully you heard me talk about the steps to kind of create assignments in mastering. Um, it's a very simple process. There are, as I said, sort of thousands of questions um, for each mastering course, um, which you can choose from and assign. And um, so I think it's probably just worth showing you kind of then what that means in terms of when you have assigned um, Oh, um, I don't personally know very much about Google Classroom assignments. Um, people ask whether it's similar to uh, VLE assignments, and I guess it, it sort of is, but there is a lot more rich content within mastering. So things like videos and animations um, and questions that have kind of multiple parts and are quite sort of structured sort of problem problem solving scenarios. Okay, so um, great. So we'll just take a quick look at what a grade book would look like. So I think you can, if you can still see my screen, this shows you what a populated grade book um, would look like within mastering. And you, there are two key things to notice. So you've got your students um, down the left hand side. And if you looked at horizontal dark pink lines, you would identify students who are not doing very well so i've got sort of four students who i would be concerned about and then i've also got all of my assignments across the top so there are two assignments two weeks where again there's a lot of darker pink and and very low almost zero well zero scores this is a pretend grade book but um you would if you had any dark pink here showing students kind of not getting good scores in mastering you would be able to see that perhaps those two topics are the ones that you want to go back maybe we do an extra revision class on do an extra tutorial maybe invite students to um do an, an additional homework um, to have more practice and then once that data is in there um you can also have a, a really simple um, diagnostics view of the gradebook. So you've got sort of um, the time students have been spending on um, an assignment. So this is a kinematics assignment and it's it would show me if I had real students, um, the time that each one has spent. It will show me that there are three questions in my assignment. And again, it would show me the, the item score so if there's one particular question that students struggled on, you'd see that there. 
um, and you see the kind of averages and spreads of student scores in a real kind of nice graphical format as well. So if you had any students kind of down this less than average end, um, you could have a kind of instant way of addressing that. Um, and then you've also got uh, the score histogram. So again, um, another way of being able to look at that data and, and look at your course and kind of, you kind of probably want a more of a curve here and you've actually got some students who are really struggling and then students who are doing really well. So you might want to set more challenging homework to um, sort of bring, bring the class uh, sort of average down if that sounds weird <laughs> but you might want to uh, look, look at the kind of spread of scores <laughs> so um, i apologize hugely that you couldn't see um the system I'm, i will check that with a colleague but what i will um make sure caleb is that you get sent a recording of a previous webinar so if you want to you can skip to the part where um i go through the mastering platform and you can just see that those steps but obviously hearing it it was hopefully useful and um yeah if you have any other questions just let me know but otherwise as i say i'll make sure you get a recording um of a webinar that worked and um someone from pearson will likely contact you um to learn more about what you're teaching and whether mastering might be something of use to you and you can find out more about at pearsonmylabandmastering.com. So thanks very much for joining me. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening. You're very welcome, Caleb. Thank you. Bye.